this method is quite problematic, I would say. You would see straight away why is it problematic. So we have to be able to fit into about 15, maybe 17 minutes. So let's concentrate. Wake up, because this one is really maybe not too complicated, but sort of tedious and sort of messy and problematic. Straight on. As you know, I use some uh, slides straight from um, Sari, and this is how it looks, how I imported this slide. Already you could see there is a problem, because there is no straight definition of this I A R R. Just uh, it, some people use one definition, some people use different. So here's, here, is, here it is shown that it's annual profit divided by initial investment, average annual profit divided by initial investment, and it gives one figure. But then some other people say that it should be different. It should be average annual profit divided by average investment. Ah, oh, wow. And now the problem starts because it's totally different story. There are different explanations different approaches. Let's forget now about these, uh, these um, formulas, because I have to warn you again that the problem is even, even bigger, because there are different names for that with different meanings. There are names like average rate of return, average annual rate of return, average accounting rate of return, accounting rate of return, book rate of return, many different. And it's so just keep in mind one thing. There's like two big formulas, two basic ones. And one, the second one will contain the word accounting and it would, would contain word book. The, pre, the first one will not. And, and when we use accounting or book, it's the second one. We, when we do not use these expressions, it will be the first one. So different authors different combinations, but don't worry. Simply don't worry. With me, you will sort it out, as you already know, step by step. I hope I will fit in time. If not, then I will possibly push it to, to the part four and, uh, of the lecture. Okay, but we need some time to understand it correctly. So the first one, is average annual rate of return. Whatever name that does not contain accounting or does not contain book. And we will do a, a, an example that would make your imagination work. And we will do it step by step. Average annual rate of return. So you are running the hotel. And you are planning to invest, expand, and build an extension with some rooms, uh, larger swimming pool, jacuzzi, sauna, nice. This investment will cost you four million pounds. And it is expected that this project will generate cash flows in the four, first four years. A million, one and a half million, two million, two million. Generally, we do not care what happens next. We just take, take our concentration on this particular set of numbers. And the question is, what is the is ARR or AARR, this average, average annual rate of return. Do it step by step. Ah, I hope you have written down these numbers. If not, please write down quickly. Minus four million, million, one and a half, two, two. Okay, written down. We accelerate. The calculation goes as follows. Step number one, we have to calculate the total return of the project. So, as probably you, you presume, we take all these flows and we add them up. 
1 million plus 1.5 million plus 2 million plus 2 million, it gives us 6.5 million of the flow. But we have invested 4 million. So this return of this project would be in this method two and a half million. We are clear. We added up all the flows, six and a half. We subtracted the four initial, initial investment. We have two and a half. What we do next? Step number two is to calculate the average annual return. You could have seen in the previous one, there is four years. So we take our two and a half million and we divide it by four and it gives us average annual means like on average per year during these four years, we will have the return of 625. And now we approach step three and the step three is 650 divided by 4 millions, it gives 15.63%. Are we clear? Let's make a quick jump back. This was the initial idea. Like we spend 4 million, then we have like one million, one and a half, two, two. Then this was the idea. We sum it up, divide the initial investment. We have the money. We divide it by years. Now we have the figure. Okay. In our acceleration and full concentration, we go. We go to example, to example two, and you will have to do the calculations. So please speed up. You remember how it works. So, the investment is 240,000 and there are six years and in the year one it's 100 in the year two it's 80 in the year three 50 in the year four 50 in the year five 50 and in the year six 30. I hope you have already started your calculations and you are speedy because soon we will have to answer what is the average annual rate of return in our example. So please be fast, be fast. I will give you still about maybe half a minute for the answer or maybe minute. You remember the procedure, adding up, subtracting the initial investment. In this case, we'll be adding because it's with minus obviously. So, and then dividing by yes and coming to the figure. Are you ready? <laughs> I hope you're ready. Sorry that maybe I have scared you a bit, but now we have really to accelerate because the next one would be, oh, tedious. So we have to, to deal with this. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Now we have the answers. So the answer is as such, when we add up all the flows and then we um, subtract the initial investment, we have 120 in step two. How many years were there? How many? Six. So 120 divided by six is average annual return. And now we calculate the rate, what means in step three, we divide this 20 by initial 240, what gives us, what gives us 8.33. I hope you have done it. This was average annual rate of return. Now we go to something more messy and more complicated. It's called, it's called, ah, sorry, uh, for this uh, formula, I forgot about the formula, that in this 
format, this is very important. In this average annual re uh, rate of return, the denominator, something that is at the bottom, is the initial investment, okay? We have average annual profit or return or income and divided by initial investment, what we have spent. But then this is an accounting rate of return. And it's a variation of this, this uh, method that we have just seen. Because the fundamental difference is that in denominator, in the previous one, it was initial investment. But the accounting rate of return takes data from the financial statements, from the financial accounting. So it takes something that is written in the books. So it uses book value, as you probably could feel if we say about book value in the books, something with depreciation will take place. Yeah, yeah, indeed, it will take. So. What is this book value? The book value, so this is what stands in the financial statement in the balance sheet, then there is this book value. So how is it explained? And just now concentrate, because we have the definition of this accounting return. So we take the average net income, like yearly, much the same as in the previous example, but in the denominator, we take average book value, means we take the initial cost of the investment and the value at the very end, it may be zero, and we add them up and divide by two, sort of we look for average book value in the given period. This is the biggest difference between the ordinary um, uh, IRR and this accounting one. So accounting or book takes this denominator as an average book value. The initial cost of an investment plus the end one divided by two. And then the method later is much the same as the previous one because we calculate this average expected income uh, on average during every year and then we divide it by this book and if it's uh, greater or then uh, then accepting this if it's uh, lower then we're rejecting so the expression scrap value that it's used very often means scrap value after the project means book value after the period of the project unfortunately in the example that we have there are some more things used Please concentrate very strongly right now, please. Because then this income that it's, uh, that it's used, it's understood as a net one, right? Then we have this depreciation. Wow, this is very important. Depreciation, I hope you know what it is. It's a linear one. Say, if we have um, something that costs 100 and we think it will be used by us by four years, then and it's linear we subtract in the books 25000 of value every year so after 2 years it's valued like 50 after 4 years it's valued zero very quickly to explain to you then we have this earnings before interest and taxes yeah because firstly we we uh, we have the earnings that that take into account all the costs but then at the end we have interest as the cost and taxes at the very end. Well, it may sound scary, but don't worry. We will soon have the very clear example how it looks like. So this is the example and please follow me with this example and then uh, we will understand this from the very beginning to the very end. We have the cost of the machine, 155,000 and its expected life is five years, right? So 155 for five years. And at the end of these five years, the machine will be worth 5,000, okay? Then this, um, these profits that we have from this machine, 
comes like as this 60 50 75,000 75 and 60 in like five years then for the depreciation we use the straight light method i hope we have written down these figures like this like years and the figures please do it at the top of your of your piece of paper then the tax rate is 30 30 percent and we have to calculate the actual accounting rate of return and compare it to our cut off rate which is 30 percent briefly after that we 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 have the the table please note down the table much like that and the table is so we have revenue in every year 60 50 75 75 60. then we have this linear depreciation of this machine 150 five years so it's 30 every year so EBIT this earning before interest and taxes is 60 minus 30 is 30 50 minus 30 is 20 75 minus 30 is 45 and so on so we're subtracting from revenue we're subtracting depreciation and we have EBIT then we have unfortunately the taxes to calculate so we have the taxes they are 30 percent so 30 percent of the of the numbers from the 30,000 is 9,000 from 20,000 is 6 and so on we calculated the tax and now we calculate the net income which is EBIT minus tax so 30,000 minus 9 is 21 20 minus 6 is 14 right so this is the upper side of the table and we come to the next income we see the figures 21 14 21 50 31 and a half okay and then we have the book value of the machine the book value at the beginning is 155 the, at the end is 5. i will show you how it is quickly calculated please follow me at the very end of this part with full concentration so step one we calculate the total net revenue this net income after tax from every year we start we, we calculate this line net income we add it up and it's 119 it's pretty straightforward now we have to calculate the average yearly net revenue after tax so the previous figure 119 we divide by 5 and we have 23,800 is it clear I hope it is so far because it's very much similar to the previous example but then in the step three there is the difference there is the huge difference because instead of taking the initial investment like in the past we took this average book value which is 155 plus 5 at the end divided by 2 gives us average of 80. this is the average book value and then at the end we do much the same and in the past we divide 20 annual average return 23.8 divided by 80 and we come to the figure 29 percent 0.75 and now the final decision to accept the project or reject this is lower than the target return rate it is lower than 30 percent so this results in rejection of the project briefly because we are out of time so this accounting rate of the return it's fairly easy to calculate and this information that we use in that normally are sort of easily available in the financial statement however there are some disadvantages it's not a true rate of the return because again time value of money is completely ignored again it has an arbitrary cutoff rate that we compare the calculated accounting rate of return and again it's it has a disadvantage or weak point because it's uh, based on book values 